the first thing I'm going to talk about the format of the exam because it's quite different from what we initially discussed. Okay, midterm two will be an open book, open notes exam. So you can either have book, you can have your notes, you can do any type of notes are fine. Okay, and also you can have any type of calculator as well. I will not be restricted it. The only caveat is that I will be using the Proctorio software. I'm sure you're familiar this familiar with the Proctorio software from many other instructors as we are all using it. Okay, the way that I'm going to use the Proctorio will be as following. One. I will be taking the photo of your USF ID before the exam will be made available to you. What this means is that when you go to the quiz and the, under the Canvas tab, you will see me turn to, and once you click it, what will happen is it's going to ask you to show your ID to the webcam, and also it will verify your webcam is working. It's going to verify your audio is working. Okay. And this can only be done by the process that I posted to my Canvas course. Okay, so what you should do is it only works on the Chrome, and you need to download an extension. Okay, so that these are very important, and this is due this uh, Thursday. So I would like you to make sure that you're there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do during the exam is I will be recording your webcam. I will be recording your audio. I will be tracking your website, which website you're accessing. Um, so this is important. Okay, I would like you to notice that. The things that I do not have access to for your own benefit is um, I don't access, I do not have access to your GPS location. Okay, I will not know whether you're taking the exam from USA or Oman. I have no idea. Okay, I will not, I will only review the webcam footage, if there is anything fishy going on, the software will announce me that, okay? And just be honest with you, 75 minutes, which is more than one hour, 15 minutes right there, right? Times 105 students, I do not have time to re re review every webcam. But the software is gonna tell me that, okay, in this student, in the 13th minute, review it. It's not going to tell me whether there's plagiarism or not. That's up to me, right? And I want to clarify that the plagiarism will be very clear because it's open notes. It's open book. If you're using your cell phone, because I'm not tracking, tracking, tracking the traffic there, that will be plagiarism. If somebody can, comes into the room and says that, hey, Careful about the density. Density must be on the numerator versus denominator. That is a plagiarism. I can see two people in the room. They are working together on the exam. That's a plagiarism. Okay? So be careful about these things. I'm not talking about whether your eyes are moving, whether, you know, um, those kind of extensive uh, things that I can do with the Proctorio software. Okay? The exam is again 75 minutes. I, I will let you have five minutes at the beginning of the exam to take the photo of your USF ID so that you will be able to verify and right after that it will be enabled to you okay before that you cannot even see the exam and you have 75 minutes to work on an exam and 10 minutes back to upload to the um, assignment that we have this is very similar to the homework assignments that you've gone through okay now um, please read the announcement I gave much more details on that I don't want to read it in a video okay and, but I have a mock-up exam on Monday, this coming Monday. I would like everyone to attend it, okay? One note about open book, open, open notes exam. It is a very different, okay? Time will fly faster. I still encourage you to, to have a page, two page, three page, whatever, of formula sheets. If you don't have it, you will never find the equ equation that you need, okay? We, the exam will, will have about 100 pages from the book, okay? So how are you going to find that? or notes you have about i don't know 70 80 pages of notes so that's not a good idea as well okay now let's talk about the technical content of the exam the midterm two will have two questions okay the first question will be from the control volume principles okay so this is module five which is the conservation of mass this is module six conservation of momentum module seven conservation of energy 
okay I have tested you from module 5 and module 6 in the first midterm now in the second midterm if you think about it I will be testing you on module 7 for sure because I want to make sure that you understand it that right and the second thing I want to do is well I can't simply ask you a question where there's only module 7 so I may incorporate that module 5 and 6 and there are examples in the YouTube channel that you should watch carefully okay and the second question will be based on the uh, differential form of these equations okay conservation principles so differential forms of it we have the conservation of mass we have the streamline we have the stream function we have the finding the pressure between two points we have finding the pressure gradient at a particular location so these are very very important things that will be tested okay uh, I have posted three examples to YouTube okay the first one um, if you think about it in that particular example I gave you u and v which is the velocities then I pretty much ask you what is the stream function and from there how you go to finding the vol uh, volumetric flow rate between two streamlines and I also asked you that hey find me the velocity potential okay and obviously I also ask you whether conservation of mass satisfied or not okay and I have another video in that video I gave you the stream function okay and in that case uh, I can ask you the same thing as about conservation of mass satisfied or not please note that if the uh, stream function is given then the conservation of mass is automatically satisfied okay you don't have to do anything about it but in the video I've showed you how to check it just to make sure that you are familiar with it I can still ask you what is the volumetric flow rate between two streamlines if I wanted to then I can also ask you what is the velocity potential if it exists right and then on the third question that I, whether a third video that I have on the YouTube channel what I have is now I have the velocity potential okay and I ask you is conservation of mass satisfied or not that was the one of the parts and in the other one I ask you what is the stream function and from there how can you find your Q okay so if you think about it I'm kind of limited okay I will ask you from either this type of question this type of question or this type of question but there's a formulation that relates this to this whether this to this or this to that right so then it's exactly the same question I'm asking okay so I will not be venturing away from these fundamental things that I would like you to learn okay one more thing that I will ask you and uh, if the examples doesn't have it you may want to be ready is for all of these three I will ask you pressure or let's call this delta pressure between two points okay that's option A or I can ask you let's write over here or I can ask you what is the pressure gradient at a point okay so this or not that this will repeat here and repeat here as well because I want to be a comprehensive question where I test you on these things all right this is about the second question um, how about the first question I gave you the information about the first question but I want to talk about the mistakes that I come the see so that you can avoid them okay so for the control volume principles please follow the steps that we have established I'm not gonna cut points if you don't but that's gonna help you get a good grade automatically okay that's number one number two make sure that you know what is the direction pressure forces okay so I have let, let's say this okay and the flow is this way right it's like a bend and I have my control volume like this right um, remember that the direction of the pressure force will be pushing it in so it's gonna be P1A1 in here but it will be opposite to the flow P2A2 and I asked this question as well if I reverse the direction of the flow what will happen to the direction of pressure forces nothing right it will still stay the same 
So that's the issue that I see. And another issue that I see from the uh, control volume principles is distinction between Vn and Vx or Vy or Vz. Okay. So these Vy, Vx, Vy, and Vz, they have com there's a velocity. So depending on how we are analyzing this, this can be plus value. This can have a sine. This can have a cosine. This can have a negative sine. Or this can be zero. About Vn value, well, that's not a negative. That's for sure because we have accounted for it. This doesn't have sine. This doesn't have cosine. So, okay. So that's the common mistakes that I do see. Otherwise, I'll give you a geometry, okay? So you will be, you know, finding a pressure, you will be finding a loss. So, and one more thing that I want to talk about this chapter, or rather the control volume principles is, be careful about the loss if multiple inlet or outlet, you need to have the m dot equation you have to have the end dot in the loss equation if you're dealing with it, okay? So let me write it in here so we are all clear. Um, so what I mean by is this. Th remember this, L dot minus W dot is equal to summation over the exits, M dot exit, V square over 2 plus GZ plus P over rho, right? Over the ex exits minus, same thing for the inlets, M dot inlet, V square over 2 plus GZ plus P over rho at the inlet. And so this is applicable. So this particular equation is applicable for both one inlet, one outlet, as well as multiple inlet, multiple outlet cases. So this equation is not going to be wrong. And what you're going to obtain in terms of the units for L dot is it's going to be watts. So this is going to be the power loss. Okay. However, there's another version that we actually derived ourselves, right? That was L minus lowercase w will be v square over 2 plus gz plus p over rho at the exit minus v square over 2 plus gz plus p over rho at the inlet, right? So I want to highlight here that this L, the unit is going to be joule per kilogram, okay? Other thing that I want to highlight is this equation is only applicable for one inlet, one outlet cases. You cannot use this equation. This equation is not valid if I have two inlet, one outlet. If, or multiple inlet, any case of multiple inlet and multiple outlets. So please be careful about it. I do see these issues. Okay. And in the conservation of energy, so I can ask you the loss like I discussed. Or I will have the Bernoulli's equation, right? Bernoulli's. And in the Bernoulli's equation, what we do is basically this parenthesis is equal to this parenthesis, right? So basically this parenthesis is a constant on a streamline. That's what we have, right? So if the pressure is missing, so you should find it. I have two videos from this in the YouTube channel. Please watch them very carefully because, again, I'm going to change the geometry. I'm not going to give you the same. The fundamentals will be the same. There will be no change in the fundamentals, okay? Derivative versus partial, okay? Integration uh, constants, when I'm taking the integral of a derivative, which is a d versus a partial, right? So what will happen is, in this, I'm going to get a plus f of uh, the, the parameter that I have not accounted for. It can be x, it can be y, it can be x, y, but then over here it's going to be a plus c. So be very careful about these two, these two things. I do see that. I sometimes see students confusing derivation and integration. It's actually much more common than the control volume principles or fluid statics. So I see this pop up much more often when you're taking the integral while you should be taking the derivative. Okay, so please, please be careful about it. Okay, from the differential forms of the conservation principles, the mistakes that I see if delta p is being asked between point one and point two. Okay, so you have three options over here. You can use the Euler. Remember, this is mathematically a little bit involved, right? And I can only move in X or Y or Z into the page, right? Or out the page. Um, so you need to be careful. So if I ask you from here to here, then you need to do a two-step process. And I explained this in one of the videos. You have to go to here and you have to go up here. But if you're kind of the student who I want to, I don't want to take the risk. I want to use my Euler's equation every single time. You will never be wrong. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the student who prefers to be 
a bit uh, strategic and want to have an easier life. So that student can use the Bernoulli's equation. Okay, and the Bernoulli's equation can be used under two conditions. One, if this is on a streamline. Honestly, it's kind of hard to see that the two points are on a single streamline. Okay, so be careful about this. We mentioned this in this conservation of mass, momentum, energy for the control volume principles. So this is not new. So this was already be established. But the new thing that we establish here is if it is irrotational, then it's much more lenient the way I can use my Bernoulli's equation. And the irrotational will be quantified for 2D flow like this. Is del u del y, is it really equal to del v del x? If this is satisfied, then I don't have to be on a streamline. I can use it for any two points. Let me give you an example. Okay, so I have this. Let's say that I have my streamline like this. I can only use 1 to 2 if it is rotational not irrotational, right? So I have the same one and this is my streamline. I can use between one and two irrotational. And I showed you the formula how to check this. So this is very, very important. I see mistakes over here. And what happens is student is not is using Bernoulli's while he or she shouldn't. And the partial credit wise will be extremely low, okay, if any, because you're demonstrating wrong equations. Okay, so this is an important point. And also one more thing I want to talk about is if I ask you or if you're being asked, what is the uh, pressure gradient in the horizontal x direction? Or what is the pressure gradient in the horizontal or the vertical y direction, right? So then you, let's say that the flow is irrotational. Even though you can use your Bernoulli's equation, you shouldn't. Okay, because the Bernoulli's equation is going to give you the p. And this is the gradient, basically it's the partial of the pressure. And these two uh, terms exist in the Euler's equation. I highly encourage you to use the Euler's equation in this particular case. And there will be one point given, for instance, 0, 0 or 1, 5, whatever. So you will be able to access this information much more easily when you're using Euler's. Sometimes I ask this to students and they're using Bernoulli. I wouldn't recommend that, okay?